Imagine you're looking at some dreamy long exposure photography with those silky smooth effects and that dynamic motion blur, or taking in a beautiful fine art photograph and wondering what camera settings were used to get those delightful shots. Now imagine that those images were taken not with some fancy mirrorless camera, but instead taken with the phone in your back pocket. What? So 15 years ago, taking a photograph on a mobile phone would have been unheard of. 10 years ago, those images would have looked pretty useless, pixelated, dull, and colorless. Even up to a few years ago, camera phones still could not compete with purpose-built digital cameras. But now with the cameras that Apple are installing on the back of their iPhones, mobile phone photography has gone absolutely bananas. Bananas? with insane quality images coming out of these cameras. But I bet what you didn't know is that these camera phones can actually take long exposures in RAW, producing a 12-bit DNG image with very impressive results. Now, technically speaking, the native camera app on the iPhone only lets you slow the shutter speed down to one second, which doesn't really count as long exposure photography. For example, most astrophotographers like to shoot between the ranges of 10 and 30 seconds, or even a couple of hours if you're into shooting star trial photography. So how do you get your iPhone to take silky smooth, super long exposures if it physically can't? Well, this is where some very smart app developers take the bare bones of your iPhone camera, apply some clever programming and algorithms, decorate it with a user-friendly interface, and come up with this unique app called Reexpose. So I thought I'd put this nifty little app to the test in some of my favorite places to shoot. So going for my first attempt at long exposure with the iPhone here using re-expose, three second exposure. So on the user interface, we have some very professional features like ISO, which we can set using the slider meter just above it. Same too with the shutter speed, which interestingly goes all the way past 8,000th of a second. Not sure how they manage that. And down to one second exposure. And these combined set your exposure. Not to be confused with the capture time, um, which is this slider here. Uh, slightly confused by this at first, but we'll come to that in a second. Then we have the manual focus option, which can be assisted by the focus peaking, which which can be set to either red, green, or blue. We also have a magnifier window, which will allow us to zoom into any area of the image and get sharp focus. We also have a live histogram, which again helps us to get good exposure, along with zebra highlight warning, very pro. And if you like, you can use all four at the same time. We can also set the white balance, but of course this app shoots in RAW, so back in Lightroom, you can play around with the temperature, temperature and tint. <laughs> temperature and tint. We also have two long exposure types, either motion blur or light trails, which is pretty self-explanatory. Up above, we have a three, 10, and 20 second timer. So if you wanna take self-portraits or just stop the phone from wobbling on the tripod. So to understand the difference between shutter speed and capture time, this is where all the magic happens inside the algorithm. A one second exposure with a one second capture time will give you a true one second image. A one second exposure time with a 30 second capture time will give you 30 individual images and composite them together to create one single long exposure masterpiece. Hopefully, oh my God, it's starting to rain. So I got myself a composition here on the Thames. Capture time is 30 seconds and ISO is at its lowest possible setting for the cleanest results. So as the London Eye spins, we should end up with some nice light trails from a 30 second exposure. And here's the result, silky smooth water and good movement in the wheel and clouds behind. Compared to just a one second exposure, I know which one I prefer. The Big Ben looking all splendid in twilight. Oh, and there's the bell, half past six I think going for another 30 second capture time. 
This will hopefully give us some nice light trails from the traffic, reds and whites. A lot of action going on in this scene, pedestrians, buses, and of course, a big digital screen. So we don't need too long an exposure, just a two second perhaps. Moving waterfalls and fountains like this are where this app really shines. Five second capture time with a shutter of a third of a second. Let's see what this gives us. There are a few issues with the Reexpose app, which I'm told will be ironed out in future updates. Firstly, the tap to focus feature, which we've all come to know and love on the native camera app, this isn't yet available on Reexpose. When you first open up the app, it defaults to an automatic focusing with some kind of phase detection, which works actually pretty well. When you switch over to manual focus, you have to rely on the magnifying glass window to nail your focus. But as I've said, future updates will hopefully give us that tap to focus option. Another slight issue with the app is the live preview, which uses a video feed of the scene with your given camera settings. The live preview window doesn't quite match the end result image and this is because the app is producing a raw DNG file which will often look quite flat and contrasty until you pull it into Lightroom and perform those basic adjustments. However, the live preview image that you're seeing will often look like an overprocessed JPEG with HDR, something to bear in mind when you're out in the field. We do also have the ability to take a picture using your Apple Watch if you have one. Great for taking those self-portrait images or just not touching the phone and creating that camera shake. There are a few in-app purchases for the Pro version which gives you extended features like interim shooting. This is where the app will save a single frame within a long exposure to use as a standalone shot. Also parallel bracketing which captures two photos at different selected exposures. Particularly useful if you don't quite nail your exposure on the first attempt. All in all, a pretty impressive app from the guys at Reflex, pushing the boundaries of what an iPhone can already do very well. If you love long exposure photography, and let's face it, most of us do, then this is a pretty handy app to have at your disposal, especially if you're not carrying around with you your big camera. Music